Good morning, everybody. It is time to talk DAO of the day. That's right. This is your host, Martin John. And I love you guys. I hope you guys are all doing well. And I am here to present the DAO of the day. This is a Recover Yourself production, which means that it's my production because <laughs> I am all things Recover Yourself. Recover Yourself is just a, an approach to recovery that uh, doesn't uh, hone itself completely in the world of addiction because we are all recovering ourselves. We're recovering to who we are. We're recovering every little bit of who we are. And, and that connection to God, that connection to the universe, that connection to all being, that non-dual understanding of the life that we live is what Recover Yourself is. And the Tao is a huge part of that for me. This is, the Tao is what introduced me to understanding the universe. And uh, I'm gonna pick just for my Tao for today, because no one's, no one's listening just yet, and that's fine, but I'm gonna pick number four as my Tao for today. The Tao is like a well, used, but never used up. It is like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. It is hidden, but always present. I don't know who gave birth to it. It is older than God. You see, this is, so this is four, and four is beautiful, and I love it, and I love the fact that it says it is older than God, because one of the things that I have expressed to some people that have come on and, and talked about, you know, God, is that, well, the Tao, you know, God's like a middle manager. God's like middle management to the Tao and the universe and all of this stuff. God is, God is just, you know, just this, this thing, you know, and yeah, we could consider the Tao God. And so we just can continue going up the chain, but you know, the Tao talks about the idea that like, if you can explain what the Tao is, it isn't the eternal Tao. If you can explain God, it isn't the eternal God. And God, as we understand it, at least here in the Western world and, and many others as well, but um, is this religious kind of deity, right? This, this person, this, this thing that you can explain. And we have big books explaining what God is and, and libraries filled with books about like how to interpret what God is. But if it is interpretable at all, it is not God, right? It is, it is not the Tao. And that's why in this chapter number four, Daily Motivations is going to join me. Um, so yeah, we can come back to four and let's see what Daily Motivation says to join. Hello. Hello. Daily Motivations. Are you with me? You are muted. Maybe something happened <laughs> and uh, they will be joining me in a second or maybe not. But um, so I'm going to go back to four as as and as soon as Daily Motivations wants to join, please, uh, you can unmute yourself and just give me a number between one and 81. and We can talk about your DAO for today. So what four states and four is pretty short. So I'm going to go ahead and read it again for anybody listening. Uh, the DAO is like a well used, but never used up. It is like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. It is hidden, but always present. I don't know who gave birth to it. It is older than God. And so as I was talking about earlier, like this idea of like, if you can explain God, oh, daily motivation. Nope. They left. Okay. So <laughs> I didn't, I don't think that I am, I, I think I'm pretty approachable. I don't know. <laughs> daily motivations, if you are still there and you want to join me, please, uh, please do. Anybody else, uh, you are welcome to join me as well. What uh, I like to do is just ask you guys to pick a number between 1 and 81, and we'll read that Tao for the day. But as I was saying, uh, it is older than God. The Tao is older than God. So what I look at often is this idea that, and how I've expressed the Tao before, is that like God is like this middle manager, right? And, and the Tao is you know, bigger than that. The Tao is what gave birth to God. And, 
and you know, I was talking all about this kind of space of like recovery, like this is a recover yourself production. I talk about recovering to stuff, the two that you are recovering to, right? Like outside of the two that you're recovering to outside of recovering from. So recovering from is a space that we exist in when we are getting clear on our thinking. So when we're creating clear thinking in our lives, because we no longer want to live under the influence of something else. So if you are living under the influence of your parents, well, you have to recover from those experiences, build your own clear thinking uh, from that space. And then you can start recovering too with a clear mind. You don't, you no longer have to abide by living under the influence of your parents. Now, if that's drugs or alcohol, uh, which I had problems with, or gambling, or porn and masturbation, or smoking, or, or addiction, of course, those addictions very often get into your head and start speaking for you. I mean, how many times have you defended your, um, your coffee use? So many people do that. How many people have defended that, oh, I drive better when, I'm, when I've had a few because I'm paying more attention? Not really, but you know, you can, you know, you know, whatever gets you through the night, right? Like, so you can live in that space and that's absolutely fine. <clears throat> so in this idea of the hidden is always present, I don't know who gave birth to it. It is older than God. This is the Tao. And this is the Tao that we are recovering to. We are recovering to being at one with that which is older than God, because we our the I in ourselves is uh, this infinite consciousness. It is, it is all things. It is everything. It is everything with nothing, right? You, you don't, you aren't connected. You are connected to all things because it is the only thing. And this manifestation that we see and that we experience is us. You know, everything from the pen that you're holding to the phone that you're listening to, that is a representation of you. And so let's go through this number four and see what we can, um, see what we can, what we can draw from it. So the Tao is like a well used, but never used up. See, that's the thing. We are constantly using the Tao and it is always there for us. You know, it is always present so that we can be with it. And think about, think about a well, a well goes into the ground and taps into the water that is in the earth. It's just there. And, but when you walk on the surface, you don't recognize that that water is down there. You don't, you don't, you don't actually think there is a stream running under my feet. But there is a stream running under your experience. There is a stream running under your perception. And that's the Tao. And, and that stream is like intuition. That stream are your deep thoughts. Who is moving your arm? Who is moving your eyes? Who is paying attention? That is the consciousness behind the experience, which is being guided and which is being nourished by the Tao, which is used but never used up. And that's underneath the surface. Like your consciousness is underneath the surface of your body. So your body exists within consciousness. Consciousness doesn't exist within your body. Your body exists within consciousness. Consciousness is the um, kind of the feminine. It's the yielding and the structure, the body mind, right? The mind body experience is the masculine. It's the thing, it's the action. And then what gets used in there is the consciousness. And then as the consciousness yields, it yields to what is even greater, which is the Tao. And that is what drives us. It is like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. See, I love this concept of the internal void. So if anybody's here and would like to uh, pick a number between one and 81, I would love to chat the Tao with you. Um, and I'm reading number four for myself this morning. The Tao is like a well used but never used up. 
It is like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. It is hidden, but always present. I don't know who gave birth to it. It is older than God. So we are moving on to the line, it is like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. So it's like a well used, but never used up. And it is like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. You know, it's interesting. This moves into the male-female role again, right? The Tao is like a well in, in its male aspects and its yang aspects because it is used but never used up, right? It is, it is, there is a structure that you can go and you can use it. But because it's never used up, it is, you know, obviously not just manifestation. It is like the eternal void. That is the, that's the yin aspect, the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities, right? The, the feminine aspect of a cup, which is the void inside, is what you can put in it. And you can put anything. You can put marbles in it. You can put pens in it. You can put a, you know, liquid in it. You can do all sorts of stuff with that infinite space. But that is, that void is what yields. And we are connected to that, right? It is, it is here. We are using it. And in the eternal void, it allows us the infinite possibilities. And if we can't live in a space of uncertainty, if we can't be in that yielding space of uncertainty, then we close possibilities off to ourselves, right? Infinite possibilities only exist when uncertainty exists. So for those of you just joining me, this is Tao of the Day. Join me to, uh, to pick a number between 1 and 81, and we'll go through your Tao for today. I'm reading number four, which states, The Tao is like a well used but never used up. It is, like the, it is also like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. So it's both male and female. It's both yin and yang. And it yields and... Um, and can be used, right? Like anything that can be used is open to being used. And so that's where infinite possibility exists. It is hidden, but always present. You know, it is both of these things. It is ne it's never, it's never gone, but you can never truly grasp it. If you could truly grasp it, it wouldn't be the eternal Tao, right? That's what, that's what the Tao states in other places, right? If you could grasp this thing, if you could um, understand what the Tao is, well, that couldn't possibly be the eternal Tao. It couldn't possibly be you, right? Like you can't be understand. You are part of the Tao. And, I, and no matter how much I write about you, even if you're six years old, even if you're even if you were just born, the things that I could write about you wouldn't hold a candle to who you actually are. And all of that stuff that you actually are is hidden. But because you are it, it is present always. And this, we have to recognize this in everybody that we meet. And we have to recognize it in ourselves because even though that which I am, the depth, of that which I am is hidden from moment to moment to everybody else, it is always present within me and always present within the relationship that I'm having. So even though there's deep, deep, deep love and feeling within me, if it's not, if, if you don't see it, it doesn't mean it's not here within me. It is here within me. And I have to remember that just because, just because it is hidden at this moment, it doesn't mean it's not present. So just because someone comes to you crying and distraught doesn't mean that their strength is gone. And we know that when we deal with other people sometimes, but sometimes we forget about that with ourselves. And that's a big aspect of, of what this, what this is like, not only do we have to recognize that the Tao is used but never used up and that it is also filled with infinite possibilities? We are as well. Why? Because we are connected to the Tao. We are in alignment with the Tao. And if we are afraid of being used up, if we are afraid of like 
not having a possibility in front of us of, of running out of ideas of, of, um, running out of the ability to love running out of the ability to connect running out of running out of people to connect to well we have to remember that even though those things are hidden they are also always present and all we have to do is really open up to it and that's who we are you know we are in alignment with the doubt we are in alignment with with all that is so here we then uh, move on to the final two lines i don't know who gave birth to it it's older than God. And as I, as I mentioned earlier, when I look at, you know, the, the, the delineation between God and the Tao, I always say, well, God's kind of like a middle manager, you know, because God has been so expressed. God has been explained to such a degree that he can no longer, or, or she can no longer, or it can no longer be what the Tao is, because the Tao is presented so simply and in such contrast to what God is, right? God is, God is, you know, like in, in my terminology, and I may upset people, God's kind of a bitch, right? God, God, he's, he's dramatic. Motherfuckers like always get mad at people. He's saying, don't love these people, love these people. Like, don't, you know, and, you know, oh no, you know, and I, I was talking to someone one time. It was just like, well, you know, God doesn't like gay people because what if we can't continue populating the earth? Well, well maybe God, so what? We can't continue. Like, the earth doesn't need us to exist, and the earth has consciousness. The consciousness is going to survive. Why does it need us? It doesn't need us. So if God's upset at something, well, he's just being a bitch. Like he doesn't need to be upset about that. Like he, he can deal with it, you know, just like we can all deal with it. And, and, and that's kind of what I mean by like, it, I don't know who gave birth to it. It is older than God. Like there is nothing in, in, in my research and the work that I've done and, and all of the spiritual work that I have accomplished and all the things that I do, I always reach out and say, well, what is the ultimate? And I want to, I want to point out because the, the word came to my mind and, you know, penultimate means the one before last. So a lot of people like to use the word penultimate as the ultimate ultimate, but no, ultimate is the end. Penultimate is the one before last. So God would be the penultimate and the Tao would be the ultimate. And God could be Yahweh. God could be, you know, there's a whole bunch of penultimates. They're all, they're all on equal footing. You are the penultimate right? Like you are God, you hold that within you. Oh, Catherine's gonna, Catherine's gonna join me. And that's a good timing because I just finished telling you that you're God, which is where this ends. And you're wonderful. Catherine, how are you doing? Hello, I'm clapping. You're clapping. I, I did get a clap earlier from somebody and I get to see those now. Like, I think they're, I think they're, they're, they're doing some really good work here on the, on, like now I can see, I can see claps. Did you, do you have the clapping ability yet on yeah, the app? That's what I mean. I was clapping. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see yours because I don't always look at the screen, but, um, but I did see one earlier. So I was happy. I'm, I'm happy that we can actually interact with people a little bit now and just get claps and stuff. And do, you, do I want to, I, I would love if somebody was listening to do a long hold and give me something other than a clap, but Catherine, oh, you have a number for me. I'll do that next. Yeah. <clears throat> number 18. 18. Off we go to number 18. I wasn't prepared. Here I am. Okay, 18 is pretty short, so we'll be able to go through it. Oh, yay! When the great Tao is forgotten, goodness and piety appear. When the body's intelligence declines, cleverness and knowledge step forth. When there is no peace in the family, filial piety begins. When the country calls, falls into chaos, patriotism is born. I remember hearing another one with the country goes into chaos, patriotism is born, but it was a different one we read. Yeah, I think I think I, I, patriotism. The, the this uh, this translation, uh, Stephen Mitchell. I think he he focuses when when he focuses on these. Uh, it, I always look at these as like steps, right? It's like, well, the great Tao is forgotten. Step one: the body's intelligence declines. What's that? 
there's clapping. I can see them. I'm all excited. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's all of these. That's so nice. Thank you for the claps, everybody. When when the great Tao is forgotten, and then when the body's intelligence declines, and when there's no peace in the family, and when the country falls into chaos, right? This is a this is a steady decline of yeah. of society. This is a steady decline, and and it all starts when the Tao is forgotten, which is, I, I am here on wisdom, helping people not forget the Tao. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm waiting for, when are we gonna start doing Winnie the Pooh Tao's? I don't know, I, I, I never read the Tao of Pooh, so um, I, I don't know. I don't know how I would, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what the Tao of Pooh is. Oh, well, we'll have to get it at some point. Yeah, Maybe. I think it's a child's book about like being mindful. I'm not. Yeah. I think that's what it is. And, and, and if it is the Tao of Pooh, I can't, I, I mean, unless, unless, the, unless he translated the Tao, like, like, I, I don't, I mean, maybe I can find the translation of, of, of Pooh's, Pooh's Tao. <laughs> I think, um, I, I this one's going to be interesting. Let's hit it. <laughs> okay. So when the great Tao is forgotten, goodness and piety appear. Where are you? Uh, it's with, Sorry. Um, no, it's, it's all right. Don't don't apologize. Your dog's got a right to speak. Feeding time at the zoo. Um, you know, we had one similar like this, but not the same. And um, I think it's it's really interesting. It's it's as though I believe that people begin to want to create their own structure of rules on the down forgotten. You know, it's interesting. Like I just read four and I'm going to go back and I'm going to read that. I don't know if you, you heard me. Is read four that. is one that we did before. We haven't done four. Four is one that I haven't read yet. The Tao is like a well used, but never used up. It is like the eternal void filled with infinite possibilities. It is hidden, but always present. I don't know who gave birth to it. It is older than God. So here, how we, how we end that with it is older than God. And then we go into when the great Tao is forgotten, goodness and piety appear. Goodness and piety are these things that are defined, right? Mm -hmm. Goodness, goodness is a definition, and piety is a religious sort of experience, right? It's about devotion. It's about it's about putting your attention towards God, right? So God appears and and creates this like goodness space it creates this space to this is this is how you act good this is how you act pious but really just being yeah. in the Tao and remembering the Tao, you can be present and those things good neither goodness nor piety need to exist in order for you to live a rich loving life I go back to what I said before. It's when people start making their own rules. That's right. You start. You start. You start defining things. Yep. What is good? What is bad? Yep. What is what is what is what is devoting yourself to something and what is not? Like like. Yes. Yeah. I feel like something like that's happening in the world today, but I could be totally wrong. Well, I think we're going to find out that patriotism is happening today. So we're going to, we, we've, we've gone, we've gone a couple steps beyond this, but I, I would, I would say, yes, I mean, we could be wrong. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe everybody remembers the Tao and that's exactly how they're existing. But yeah. I don't know let's, go on. True, let's, but go, let's move on to the next line. When the body's intelligence declines, and this, this is so great for you because I think you talk so much about intuition and the intuition would you consider that the body's intelligence no i wouldn't okay because i consider the body to be a 3d type of thing okay so for me i look at the body mind as one thing mm -hmm. right as yeah. like it's inseparable right? The yeah. bodies, the body can't have intelligence without mind. And when the body dies, the body still exists, but it also can't have intelligence because it has been separated from the mind. So yeah. the body mind, physical. Is where, yeah. Yeah. So, so if we were to put that in when the body mind intelligence declines, cleverness and knowledge step forth. I love cleverness. Yes. But cleverness I to me yeah. leans on the crafty. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's why I love it because it's, you know, it's in the crafty realm. Yeah. Yeah. When they bring up that craftiness. Right. And when you say you love it, like, 
would you prefer craftiness or would you prefer the body's intelligence or the body mind intelligence? I just mean I like the wording. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't, I don't so think I you do. Was crafty. <laughs> yeah, I was oh, good. Was good, yeah, I, I, I do too because I don't brings... really do but like body mind for me is being, um, be it's too physical for me. Okay. Um. Because that's where people kind of, they lean into that, that physical a lot. Though you can feel your intuition physically, it is just a way for us to be able to get the message in another way because we, we tend to want to be so physical. Yeah. But yeah. if we look at it in like how you're putting it, you know, I can ride with you on this. Okay. Um, but it is very much we we go from kind of making rules for people because okay we're not really sure so we're going to need to make the rules of society because we're going to choose what's good and what's pious right and, and now you know we feel like we're going to need a little bit more guidance here so i'm getting a little get more crafty about it i'm going to create a little bit more structure for everybody to have to live within because right. i don't Feel like you can figure that out on your own. So I think as humans, we're going to have to create a little bit more structure because independently, just relying on your own knowing, it's just not going to work for us, the crafty ones. Right. And and we want to, you know, like, yeah, we, in order to be clever and knowledgeable, like this is, this is the, in, this is the, the up uptick of our ego right like we yeah. we can control this in in a better way like it's not just it's not just goodness and piety now we want goodness and piety in a very specific way and yeah. we know it's how to sell that the steps that you follow this is right. the only way that it can be done you know this is this is it you must you must do this right and then once that's once that starts to decline when there is no peace in the family filial piety begins now it's about uh piety like this this space of being being pious the space of being uh devoted to the elders in your family like being devoted to the people who came before you the people who created the the level of knowledge and cleverness and the community as well right yeah and that's like uh oh oh wait 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 you're you're trying to be individualistic you're stepping out of the box you're using your own creativity you're questioning the ways that we're doing things what's That's wrong right. with people pull it together right. the, yeah and then we we oh, force sure. we force that yep. feeling of piety look remember how we did things before this is yep. how we want to continue doing it yep yeah and then eventually when the country call it falls into chaos patriotism is born Mm -hmm. And patriotism to me is like this forced tribalism. You know, it's like, if you're not part of us, then you're going to get kicked out. It is this, it is this space of like getting people to react in a space of fear. Interesting. Um, and, and described in the Tao or in like reality? In, uh, in, in, in how I see what, what I understand patriotism to be. It's like when you, when you, you know, like when you're really, really patriotic, I feel like you're not yourself. You are, you are, you are supporting that craftiness. You're supporting that cleverness. You're supporting that filial piety. You're supporting that goodness and piety, right? Like you're supporting all of those things very loudly. Hmm. Interesting. That's how I see patriotism. Uh, I think, um, I, I don't see patriotism that way. Okay. I, I see patriotism, um, for, it's more of what you stand for, for the structure that you're used to. Does it, if that makes sense. So, right. And, and I, I think, I think what I'm saying is very similar to that. Yeah. yeah. So for whichever, you know, structure it is, you know, one structure may be very much within this, these rules, this is how it is, you know, you're being forced to North Korea is a good example. You know, that patriotism seems to fall very much in line with this. Hmm. You know the rules the and then some patriotism is 
for the the structure that is designed under for no not as many rules the free democracy you know but it depends on i think also what country we're looking at and what that where that came from and how people are, are seeing it so it's kind of an interesting thing isn't it because it, patriotism can stand for all the different levels of this this in number 18. right and I think, and I think what the Tao is saying is that patriotism is, um, can go as far as like North Korea. Yes. But, but it all like patriotism in order for it to exist starts with the forgetting of the Tao, mm -hmm. like starts on a path of forgetting the Tao. And then, and then even if your patriotism revolves around freedom, patriotism I think in, in the way I look at it also talks about it in a way that it's like understood as a, like patriotism looks a certain way, no matter where you are. So like freedom looks a certain way because I'm sure there are people in North Korea who feel like, well, maybe not. Like I can't, I can't imagine people are in North Korea feeling like they have freedom. Right. Um, right. right. So, but, but, um, but under under the you know under the auspice of their of their brainwashing you never know what people feel you know, you know like so so i mean and that is because the dao is completely forgotten that is because not only the mm -hmm. dao is forgotten but the body's intelligence declines because mm -hmm. the dao is forgotten and then because the body's intelligence defi declined the the peace in the family has declined the peace in the community has de declined everything and now it is only filial piety and then everybody calls you know the great leader or whatever like yes. their father right and so right. now filial piety begins and then the country falls into chaos patriotism is born mm -hmm. you know and people in that system may very well feel whatever they feel and they're and they're you know like people that work in the government may very well feel free but we don't know <laughs> that <laughs> within reason right yes within reason yeah 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 i think it's an interesting thing to look at how patriotism fits in this yeah i think so too i think patriotism yeah. as a word and as something as it fits here i think it's it's important to to be able to question our understanding yeah yeah i i see it in in more of the 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 north korea realm of yeah you know um not kind of forced patriotism if that makes sense yeah and i think I, and and that makes a lot of sense uh, as i was talking about because i i also think patriotism as it relates to the united states is also forced but i don't think that um i don't think that it is forced in the same way and it's just when you get a group of people like waving flags um then that could lead people to feel forced into waving flags in in a very specific way and there's there's rules behind it and 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 i do think that our country is falling into chaos and and patriotism could be is is being touted from both sides in different ways and um and you know it's it's just interesting to observe uh, and especially when we we start this whole thing off with you know when the great Tao is forgotten, goodness and piety appear. So Catherine, if you are still listening, um, and um, I would love to hear your uh, response to that if you wanted to come back on. Um, yeah, just because I didn't, I didn't, I, I don't want to just have the last word or anything like that. <laughs> I'll be quick about it. I yeah. have a different perspective and my yeah, perspective please. comes from my mother because she's Canadian. And when she was growing up, they didn't have their own flag. And there, mm. there was no connection to Canada being being country. And, and still even I find, you know, that people are, I'm French Canadian, I'm, you know, Chinese Canadian, I'm, you know, there was no and, she, you know, she said, and I always found it true going to Canada, especially like the 90s and things that you know, what had people fighting in, in, um, 
Desert Storm. And so I, I had a, a little flag on my car and a little yellow ribbon because I had friends in college that were there. And I'd go up to Canada for the weekend and they'd be like, oh, you weirdo Americans, what's wrong with you? Yeah. And I, um, you know, you guys have soldiers over there that are the same age as us, too. Yeah. And so I see patriotism as um, having respect for those who stand up for your country, for um, for loving your neighbor, like where I live here in the States, and, and coming together as one and supporting um, each other, being able to have the ability to be individual. And for me, living in the United States, it allows for that. But I, one of the things she said was, you know, we had we didn't have a flag. We had nothing to come together over, and so we had nothing to bring bring us bring us as one. And to me, that's patriotism is is um, when it's about community and coming together and and having kind of one thing that we all connect over brings people together. People need something to connect over. And that was something I saw in the show. And she still talks about that a lot of how they, you know, there was nothing that brought everybody together, allowed them to be kept separate. And I, and I agree with all of those things. Um, I, I wouldn't define that as patriotism. And I think that's where our communication is, um, is 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 not not breaking down i think we are communicating very well but i think that um but but i don't i don't that's where our disagreement is is that like i don't that's not how i define the word patriotism i agree and love everything that you just stated and i think that like like the thing that i kind of rally behind is the individuals right like right. is your ability to be you completely and that's what i rally behind mm -hmm. not your because i rally behind um you know everybody on the planet being able to right. be who they are whether they're under my flag or not and and i want to be able to connect with them and that's why i think that that i define that differently than patriotism but when in the way that you describe it especially as it related to like england or, or great britain and and um and Canada, uh, in the, you know, like, I, I don't know when your mom, I don't know if she emigrated there, if she was born there and, and oh, okay. So, so through, throughout your mom's life, like that could very well just be separate, right? Always feeling separate, always feeling on, um, like, like there's like, everybody is disparate, you know, it isn't, it isn't like we're together. And so I can appreciate that quite a bit because and because then that brings us back to the Tao, right patriotism yeah. is born and under that definition patriotism is born which brings us back to remembering the Tao because we are all now connected and then we can go through this cycle again mm -hmm. right and, and the cycle brings us up into in, into a better kind of um into a better understanding of what the Tao is yeah and it's it, the cycle is necessary yes i agree yeah, the cycle is very necessary. And, you know, I um, and I don't feel as though we're arguing, I think. No, I don't either. No. As as though um, we're bringing clarity to the conversation and, and anyone who's listening, maybe they can see that, you know, that I think it's so important. And that's what I talk about with intuition as well. Tell me how you experience it. How do you define it? What does it feel like to you? Because right. that, that's where that's where you meet it. It doesn't mean that you have to define it as I do. That's right. That's right. And I just wanted to understand how you understood patriotism because I was just like, no, this isn't how I'm seeing it. And I'm so glad that you were able to come out <laughs> and clarify because I was like, I don't, I don't know how to reconcile that like with my understanding. And, and now I do because like I understand and believe everything that you stated, but would not put that anywhere near in my definition of patriotism. And that very well may be because, you know, like um, I, I, I don't feel connected to my country. Right. I feel mm -hmm. connected to individuals. I don't I don't feel like being having been born and raised in Chicago. I always say, you know, I feel much more like a Chicagoan than I feel like an American. You know, like, and and it's a really interesting sort of uh, oh, that, experience. 
yeah, like I've, I've moved, you know, like 30 times and lived in eight or nine states in every corner of the country and yeah. drifted multiple times. And so, and, and, you know, lived in multiple provinces in Canada. Yeah. And so when people ask me where I'm from, I say North America. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. I'm like from North America. They're like, okay. I'm like, well, yeah. I don't know to tell you, but <laughs> that's all I got for you. So, you know, for me, it's so much about that. And I don't know if it also has to do with, um, military. I, I right. My family goes back, I'm, I know, like to the Revolutionary War. You know, mm -hmm. my grandfather was a submarine officer in World War I. So that was always a big thing growing up. Every generation has been served in the military, in the Navy, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I you know, like, although one of my great uncles died in World War II, um, we don't my my dad you know his father left when my dad was two um i found him when i was 30 mm -hmm. um but uh he's he was in spain so when i found him so it was this you know like we don't like my my fa i'm second generation mm -hmm. so i i my family got here in the 50s you know and um or you know, yeah right around in, in yeah. mid fifties, my, my yeah. family arrived in the United States. And so we don't have a history with this country really like in, in, in terms of like photos and other things, like my family kind of started with my parents. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But and then, I, and then I, I found family from there, but you know, yeah. Although I know, I know many, many people that are first or second generation that are probably more patriotic than <laughs> many Americans. Yeah. So it is kind of interesting how the experience is, but I would say a lot of my patriotism also comes from, um, you know, this, the service that, that many, that every generation of my family has had. So it's always been a thread of, of us. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful. And I think like, those are things that I do feel like, you know, I, I, that sometimes I wonder, I wonder what that's like to care. Um, and I know that sounds really harsh, but like, if I were to really be honest about some of these things, it's like, I, 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 I don't, and this sounds really harsh, but it's not, I mean, it's just where I'm at. Like, yeah. like I don't have that care of just like, I wonder, you know, like, and so I'm always like, I wonder what it would be like to really, you know, like, like there are people in my life that love things and love, love certain things and they have choice and they have, and they, they've made, they've made made up their mind about what their favorite thing is or whatever. And it's like, I wonder what that's like, like in general, I, I, I don't like things to be anything other, you know, like, and, and so it's a really, it's a, it's a really interesting sort of like, like to have preference to me is, is, is kind of foreign sometimes. Yeah. Interesting preference to things. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that I have. I mean, I have a favorite in the moment sometimes. But. Yeah, I, I love just like enjoying that in the moment right now. Yeah, like this is this is where I'm at. But I, I remember like being a kid and being asked like, "What's your favorite this?" And I was just like, "I, I, I don't know." Yeah, I don't like, really have a favorite color. Yeah, things like that. Yeah, food unless I'm craving it at that moment. Right. But I was I, like, I want this now. But on my desk, I have you know, because I'm I'm dual citizen. I'm Canadian and American. Love so. that. I want I want to hold a dual citizenship with Spain, but I'm missing one piece of paperwork. Oh well, I couldn't do it until just recently because the year I was born was not allowed to get it. Oh, yeah, it's because you know we're we're just crazy people, I guess. But um, yeah, I have them on my desk, both flags. Mm, that's beautiful, and I you know I like that. I don't I don't I don't know that. I mean, I, I've never owned or thought of owning an american flag really yeah mm -mm. i've never like i have had a spanish flag in my car but i think that was because i was so proud of myself bringing you know going to spain and finding my family 
you know, and, and, and I was actually looking at Spanish properties today being like, yep, I'm moving to Spain. Like, like, don't know when, don't know how, but that's happening. And I was looking at properties this morning. I have quite a few friends. One of my friends from, uh, she's Belgium. She lives in Spain, moved in 2000, 2020. Okay. Another friend that, uh, is, um, Swedish and he moved years and years ago he lives and strangely enough they ended up moving near one another <laughs> oh wow Do, where whereabouts in spain are they um you know we don't really talk about exactly where they are and we did once but i can't remember anymore spain is spain is huge yeah it's huge it, it can cover three time zones and it only has one so there's like like <laughs> yeah so that's why i'm like how funny it is that they like t less than 20 minutes from one another oh wow yeah. Well, 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 we should talk because I, I would love to, I would love to especially talk to, well, I mean, they're both Europeans, so they were able to move to Spain a lot easier than I would be. But, but, yeah. uh, but either way, I would thank you. Thank you for coming on and kind of clarifying that and kind of moving. Oh, no, you're, your this is so beautiful. And I love you so yeah, much. It's you're so cutting out. You're welcome. I know. I know. So, you know, I apologize for being Canadian sometimes, but, you know, it'll come together. <laughs> You're the best. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Keep clapping for me and do a long, do a do a long hold and give me something other than a clap. Wow, you're really kind of bossing me there. I'm so. bossing you. That's what I do. I think someone just did it. I think someone just gave me something, but I couldn't see what it was. It's so. Allison. Oh, she did a heart. <gasps> oh, thank you so doing. much. You're. I was just gonna say, Martin, Martin John, you're forcing patriotism on me by telling I'm me. I forcing, have to. yes. <laughs> don't do nothing you don't want to do. And I got a thumbs up from Allison. Look at that. That's great. Okay, I'm going. I'm I want to do it. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Uh, all right. Well, if anybody wants to come on and pick a number between one and eighty-one, I would love to have you on. Um, I know Allison was out there giving me the thumbs up and stuff. So yes, thank you so much. And look, ooh, you're excited. <laughs> Man, Allison, how was the first off? How was the sound healing? It was great. It was great. Wow, yeah, it was like, good. Look, like your voice has changed since then. <laughs> it's because I just woke up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I I have a long morning starter. I'm like, I start slow. Yes, linger, linger. Mm -hmm. My cup of tea and just some sitting in the chair, staring into space is how I start the day. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I I I have a I have a I, I have kind of like a three hour routine in my morning, like mm. that, that gets me up and out of bed and stuff. So. Lovely. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you have a number to start your day? Um, let's pick what numbers are unnoticed. Maybe the number. I have a list of numbers that are unnoticed in front of me, actually. Okay. So focus on one of them. Mm -hmm. And we're going between what and what? We're going between numbers. Mm -hmm. One in eighty-one. One in eighty-one. Okay, Is that, that one of that, them. That's not one of them, but we'll go to seventy-four. No, no, we got to do one that's it's not. I want, I want, I want to tell you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually go to the one that I was focused on because it's really interesting. Okay, it was okay. forty-seven. Oh, okay, so. My psychic development is not wrong. It's just I am dyslexic with numbers. I literally am. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah, you picked 74 and I was like, wow, because I was focused on 47. Yeah, but I miss, I miss it. I'm, numbers go backwards for me. That's okay. Yeah, it's it's because uh, it's because energetically they're they're flipped upside down because your eyeball flips things upside down. Because we're a mirror of, of each other. That's right. Oh, look at that. Okay. Without opening your door. You can open your heart to the world. Without looking out your window, you can see the essence of the Tao. The more you know, the less you understand. The master arrives without leaving, sees the light without looking, and achieves without doing a thing. It makes me think of your darkness retreat. Yes. <laughs> Wow, that's a good one. Yeah, you know, I'm, 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 I, I'm, I'm it's, it looks like it's going to happen in the beginning of March. So I'm excited about that. It looks like we're, uh, we're honing in and it's going to be in Guatemala. And it's gonna be fun. So you won't be missing anything. It's dark in Chicago. <laughs> yes, yes. <it's, laughs> All right, go through it line by line. Yep. Without opening your door, you can open your heart to the world. 
I'd like to to start this with like there have been times where uh, I've been on wisdom and there have been times where I've been connected to people and and as a Reiki master and energy healer and stuff I I do distant work and there are times where I can just sit and I can focus on somebody and connect with them in this way that like is is really is real like there's there's and of course, you and I know that it's real because we are, you know, non-local beings. We, we, there isn't, we are not, uh, you know, prisoned in this body. We're not imprisoned in this space. Like space in all of time doesn't exist, and we understand that. So, so we can connect with people. But I mean, I've had so many beautiful connections where I can just like connect, and I would love to, like, just like even even in talking with you right now, just kind of like under the surface, just connect with you in a just a deeper way between, you know, like our hearts just connect. And that's something that, that, that I want to be able to just, just touch. Yeah. You know, most people get stuck in the physical. Yeah. They, they literally think the only way to connect is via the physical, which is uh, not the only way. And I remember when I, it's not even, it's not even a good way, really. Um, it's, it's a, it's a it's, it's a way a, yeah i'm looking for the words it's like it's a it's a i don't even have the words right now it's it's it's, it's not disconnected but it's a way that is off an offshoot from the og connection right it's like a yeah. it's like trying to feel snow with gloves on like right. you're not gonna know what it feels like really because you've got gloves on and you're like oh this is snow but you're not really getting the true connection. Do you know the term straw dog? No. Um, I'm, I'm going to look it up to see if I, I got this right. Uh, a, a straw dog is um, like a stand-in. It's a stand-in mm. for something, right? Mm. Uh, or a straw man. Or like it's a it's a stand in for something that is real, like like or or like you could uh, like a proxy, like you can send a proxy, but you won't go right. Like you won't mm -hmm. go somewhere, but but someone can act as a proxy or a straw dog for you. And and it's kind of like a stand in. And I look at this idea of the physical, like connecting physically as a stand in for real intimate connection. Yeah. And it's right. like, and it just gives you enough to be like, oh, this is, this is nice. And this feels good. And this gives me this instant gratification and proof. But when I connect with someone, whether that, you know, like that be like a lover that I decide to like entwine with or entangle with like emotionally or, or, or energetically or someone like yourself or Catherine, who I have, you know, built these connections and this entanglement with, then a physical, like we were going to physically meet and that would have altered something, but it would have only proven the connection, right? Mm -hmm. Even though the connection is already here. Yeah. For, yeah. For, it definitely, it, it shifts it because we have, Impress, energetic impressions of each other. And wisdom is one of those ways in which we can garner a greater energetic connection because we're not, we're, we, there's a picture. But beyond that, you have decided who I am based on my vibration. And even this picture gives a vibratory representation when the, you know, when I speak, it shows a shadow of the vibration around my, it's a halo effect. Yeah. So, um, and one of my best friends that I met I don't know, 10 years ago, we literally only met once physically where I went out to see her in California. That's it. We've only ever yeah. met once physically. Yeah. And I don't think, you know, like, I think a lot of people have a lot of rules as to what, you know, in order for this to be, uh, you know, like a good friendship or whatever, these are the things, these are the expectations that I have. But I think this DAO, what it's saying is you can open your door without opening your door. You can open your heart to the world and you can just, you can be there and you can love the world without ever meeting a single person. You could still entangle with every person on the planet. Yeah. And I think it's a good representation of the, you know, how elusive and how how much of an illusion 
the actual physical aspect is because now we're seeing you can connect with anyone anywhere in the world at any time. And there's the interface of the digital representation, but you got to rely on your senses and in, inner senses a lot more because you've got to, you've got to use your intuition. You have to use your, um, you know, deciphering skills, um, inner ones to decide, you know, what are the right relationships that you'd like to spend time with digitally? Cause it's, there's a lot of them, but yeah, I mean, I remember when I first years ago, uh, I distrusted when I still distrusted the inner reality, I was still leaning on the external reality to provide my sense of certainty. And there was a woman I connected with who did, um, what she termed to be past life readings at the time. And, you know, she was like, just pick a time, you know, and I'll send you a write up. I'm like, I don't have to be there. Not even on the phone. She's like, no, yeah, just send you this, you know? And then she sent me this write up and it was, she had, you know, focused on a point of time and picked up an energy that I was resonating with. It didn't need to, it didn't even need to know me. Yeah. You know, I've got friends who are, who are mediums who are like, you want to read them to your soul team? Yeah. And we go on live stream, you know, the um, stream yard, which streams to LinkedIn, Facebook and um, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. I'll... And we don't know the identity of the people sometimes because it just shows up as Facebook user. Right. And she'll be like, you know, they're like, I want a reading from my soul team. So she'll give them a reading from like very little physical data. And people are like, Damn, that was spot on, right? Look, so how? So the people listening that are that are doubting, how, right? They always want to know how does that happen? It's because you're not you're not actually a physical entity, you're a non-physical entity, and you live beyond the confines of the door, which is the lens of time and space. And you can connect with any point in time because it's infinite. You just focus there. Yeah, and there is no time. Right. Right, there time is. doesn't exist. The, these things don't exist. We only perceive them as existing. And right. we have been so, we have been, you know, over the last millennia, really living in our frontal lobe, which, uh, you know, relies on input. And, you know, it's a very masculine place to be. And so we want all of this forceful sort of like proof. And like, mm -hmm. we still like are constantly looking for proof. But, you know, the Tao is saying here, like, without even looking at your window, you can see the essence of the Tao. And the essence of the Tao is in each and every one of us. And so you can feel and see that without, without even having to use your eyes. Once again, a, a, a big, you know, a, a big wonderful aspect of me utilizing this dark retreat is so that I can stop relying on that, which is not really telling me the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, it's sort of like in an org chart fashion. I was thinking about, because our mind wants to replicate these kind of esoteric concepts in a, in a mathematical or somewhat presentable way. But like, you know, the I that I am that I am, it's like, I we are literally not even metaphorically, we are literally a representation of the one I am. And it's a, it's a reflection of the individual uniqueness. But if you go back up, it's like, you have a soul, and your soul has an oversoul, and that oversoul has an oversoul, and that oversoul. And like, in each iteration has infinite numbers of iterations, yeah. of which you are one. Mm -hmm. It's like, so you are connected and I am connected and everybody who's listening who even doubts because doubt is confidence and doubt. You're confident in something always. You're either confident that you're confident or you're confident that you're doubtful, but you're always confident. Mm -hmm. So you may be confident that this connection doesn't exist, which doesn't delete the connection. It just interrupts the frequency. <laughs> right, right. And then it moves on to say, the more you know, the less you understand. Oh God, yes. <sighs> You know, like, and even even with you and I, like, as we believe that we understand or know some of this, really, we live in the uncertainty of it all as well. And by just trusting in the uncertainty and trusting in the fact that we don't know exactly what is going on, we just know that we are connected. And mm -hmm. it's real. And it's real. And we just have to accept the fact that it's real because explaining it is just understanding less. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that dark room idea really like shook me because when I think about it, 
it brings up fear because the reliance is on the physical to create the sense of certainty. Because if I can see it, touch it, hear it, smell it, taste it, you know, then I'm then I'm certain. Then I feel stable, which is a which is a which is an addiction of the physical. Yes, it's the reliance that says if I can, you know, do these five senses, uh, therefore, I feel stable. When in reality, the stability is quote unquote in the darkness. It's like, but it, within the darkness, this. And I was thinking about your story about the light um, that you saw, and. Oh, in the in the sensory deprivation. But you, yeah, but you sort of wiped it away as I, I quote unquote created it as an imaginary thing. But isn't this all an imaginary thing? The whole experience. Yes, yes, yes. it absolutely is, and that was, and that's, and that's why it's so easy to dismiss. Just like, oh, there's just something I created. Moving on. Like mm -hmm. it was a dream, just like all of this. You know, one of my exercises is when I go to bed, I, I kind of recount my day, and I go, okay. That was a dream off to bed. When I have another dream, I wake up, I remember all of my dreams and then I wipe them away. Those were dreams. And then it, that, that allows me to kind of just sit in the presence now. I don't have to live in that which was a dream. Of course I do and I still have sadness and other things like that, but it's a practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's making me think of the countdown on the timer because when you look at the countdown, what causes people some anxiety is the greater clock. You know the big clock in the sky. Yeah, that's the right. Countdown clock, and the more we we observe what we are creating, which is the sense of time, the more fear is instilled, the more anxiety. I don't have time. I don't have time to do that. I'm getting older. I never have enough time. I'm too busy. It's like time, time, time. It's like it's once this clock is gone. You know, both Martin, John, and I still exist, and when our big clock goes out, we still exist. That's right. How beautiful. Um, I am going to read these last three lines. The master arrives without leaving, sees the light without looking, and achieves without doing a thing. You're welcome to come back on if you want to you know, talk about that. So the master arrives without leaving, sees the light without looking, and achieves without doing a thing. What I would uh, look at here is uh and, and everything that allison and i spoke about uh, relates back to this 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 is the thing like so if if you doubt yourself if you have if you reach for something more than is right now you want to leave you want to go out you want to do something you want to leave this moment behind but the master arrives without leaving. He arrives here right now with whatever is right now, because the master is that which is right now. And so he is this app. He is all that is at this moment. He sees the light without looking, just like I did when I was in that sensory deprivation tank and achieves without doing a thing. Howard, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Martin? John? I'm doing very spoken. well. Doing very well. Uh, it's great to connect with you. It's wonderful. Really, yeah. Yeah. Really love what you do um, every day. Um, the Tao is one of my single favorite pieces of work in all of existence. Um, so really appreciate it. It's great stuff. Yeah, I, I I've been a fan for a long, long time, and so I'm really I'm, I'm grateful that 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 you uh, that you join me because like sometimes people join me don't know anything about the DAO. Sometimes people join me and know quite a bit, mm -hmm. or it's introductory or whatever. But um, but yeah, love love being able to present this, and so I'm glad that 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 you uh, you're you're able to enjoy it. Um, do you have yeah. a number that we could we could look at? Um, sure. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'll just, uh, the number that's coming to me is 22. So I'll just pick that 22. Beautiful. And that is yet another number that we have never covered on Tao of the day. So, uh, it's a little longer, but we're going to go into it and then we'll, we'll, we'll get your initial thoughts and then go through it line by line. Okay. If you want to be whole, let yourself be partial. If you want to become straight, let yourself be crooked. If you want to be full, let yourself be empty. If you want to be reborn, let yourself die. If you want to be given everything, give everything up. The master, by residing in the Tao, 
sets an example for all beings because he doesn't display himself. People can see his light. Because he has nothing to prove, people can trust his words. Because he doesn't know who he is, people can recognize themselves in him. Because he has no goal in mind, everything he does succeeds. When the ancient master said, if you want to be given everything, give everything up, they weren't using idle, empty phrases. Only in being lived by the Tao can you truly be yourself. Wow. Amen to that. Um, so I want to start by saying, you know, this idea of you can truly be yourself. Like this is what my like recover yourself like work is all about. This like idea of recovering to who you are and who you are is a being being lived by the Tao. Right. And so by seeing the infinite self, you allow yourself to express as needed throughout your journey. And I say needed, and this is my interpretation of it. You know, I say as needed based on um, service, if that's your intent. Right. And, and, and as we go through this, I think we're going to find that, that being used by the Tao is our highest um, ability. And, and to be able to get out of the way and, and, and that will bring about all that we, um, all that we desire, right? Like I think here, I'm in the United States. Sounds like you are as well, just mm -hmm. from your accent. Yeah. But, um, so, uh, we're both from Chicago, by the way. Oh, look at that. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> that's why you sound so normal. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, so, so, all right, well, let's, let's go through this. If you want to become whole, let yourself be partial. You know, there's a lot of these like little, like, if you want this, let yourself well, do this. So we'll go through this pretty quickly, well, but what's that? So basically to, to me, that is the idea that because we are in an ever infinite expanding existence that you're never complete in the idea that you've either understood it all that you are have arrived in other words being partial allows you to continue to experience wisdom grow and expand love that um i also want to just relate this back to the bottom of this piece where it's like being lived by the Tao. if you want to become whole let yourself be partial meaning you are not the only one in control like you are at one with the Tao. you are here because there is something bigger that is a part of you. And I think that that what you're expressing is very, very similar. I just want to kind of bring that back mm -hmm. around in sure. terms of this idea of like, you are not just you. You are only a part of you. And there is a part of you that you will never be. And that is the Tao. Mm -hmm. And that is living and, and live in, as it says at the bottom here, you know, only being right. lived by the Tao can you be truly yourself. And truly yourself right. means you're being whole, but in being whole, you are partial. Right. We do get beautiful glimpses along the way of that oh, expansive yes. infinite, so but, but, yeah. but can never be captured, really. <laughs> yeah. That's why we have to be grateful for it. If you want to be straight, let yourself be crooked. Mm-hmm. You know, crooked is always an interesting word because I remember crooked meaning the opposite of straight. But when I was a kid, I saw some things like crooked was just like a crooked person, you know, mm -hmm. someone who was bad. And yeah. that's an interesting sort of thing. Yeah, Thoughts? I don't. Yeah, it's that's not the connotation I feel about it. Um, mm -hmm. But I can see where you're coming from on that uh, completely. I see it as uh, something imperfect. Um, so accepting, accepting the imperfection is your perfection, is your straightness, is how I see that. Yeah, I love that. I like that because because that one always kind of shook me because I'm like, you know, live on the straight and narrow or like you're crazy. Yeah, right, all of these right. sorts of things. And, and, and so that, that that's, that's, you know, and even though I can step back and be like, well, that's not really what it's saying. I really like the way you kind of put it. If you want to become full, let yourself be empty. Mm -hmm. Well, that goes back to the Zen master story of the... The student coming to the Zen master for teachings and the Zen master's pouring tea. Do you know the story? And uh, the this, this student, I'm sorry. I, I, no, no, please. I didn't. Okay, okay. So the Zen master's pouring tea into the student's cup. And as he's pouring tea into the student's cup, 
the student is telling him everything he knows about Zen studies and how much he's learned and what, what he has to teach and tell other people. And the Zen master is pouring tea and all of a sudden it's overflowing the student's cup. And, and the student says, master, master, my cup is full. You can't get any more tea in. And the master looks at him and he says, your mind is like this cup. In order for me to teach you, you have to empty your cup. So I think that pertains to this line. Yeah, that, I, I agree with that completely. Yeah. Yeah. If you want, like, you have to, in, in order to be able to be filled with anything or be, fill anybody or anything, like, you have to allow yourself to be here in the present moment mm -hmm. without your preconceived ideas of what it is supposed to give you. Because if Love you it. approach this with those preconceived ideas, you're already full. Wow. That's I love it. That's really beautifully said. If you want to be reborn, let yourself die. And I would love to start with this one because this is, this is as someone who has 21, I just celebrated 21 years clean and sober, sobriety, Congratulations. And, like, and, and recovery is such a big part of who I am. And, and I talk about this, this space of like recovering to something beyond recovering from it. And this is the idea of like, you are being reborn. You have to let that who, that which you understood yourself, those identities that you held on to as mm -hmm. who you were, you have to let those die. And, and, and without letting those die, you will always hold on to those. And I, and I do feel like being reborn, you just have to let, let that person that you thought you were go because it's not who you were. And it's not who you're going to be. It is who you were. It's not who you're going to be. Yeah. It's not who you have the opportunity to be or, or, or what's in front of you. And that's, I, I, I not really much to add to that, except I think that, um, by, in my experience, being reborn was about seeing more of what was possible and embracing that. And then naturally, the old self, which I saw in reflection, didn't serve me, just sort of laid down. Yeah. And that's a, that's, that's it. You know, death is something that we want to be able to approach with open arms. Mm -hmm. You know, and when we can, when, and, and even, when it's our identity, the death of who we were yesterday. And mm -hmm. we could do this every single day and just let who we were yesterday be who we were yesterday and ask yeah. ourselves, you know, in my workshops, I always asking people like, how many of you like chose to drink coffee today? Now, how many of you actually chose to drink coffee or just made a decision you made yesterday? Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, like, who are you today? And if you're not right. asking that question, then you're just kicking this can down the road. Right. You know, there's a, a beautiful movie. Uh, it's one of my favorite all time movies that the theme of the film is that death is rebirth. And uh, it's a film called the fountain. And it's mm -hmm. this, have you ever seen it? I it just, I've seen so many things, but I haven't in a while. So I don't know. Uh, maybe. Okay. It's called the F fountain. It's with Hugh Jackman and, and Rachel Weisz. And um, it was a Darren Aronofsky film, um, who I happen to, to enjoy as a, as a writer producer. But the film was so elegantly done about the nature of time and, and birth and death. So anyways, it just came to my mind. I thought I would offer it, but uh, yeah, fantastic. I'll, I'll definitely, yeah. you know, like I'll definitely check it out when I'm, when, very, I'm, when I'm up for watching some. Very moving film um, oh, about spirituality, yeah. And I'm a huge, huge Jackman fan, so, you know, like... Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. He does yeah. good work. Okay, so the master, by residing in the Tao, sets an example for all beings. That's very, that's just statement. Okay, good, I'm glad. Uh, because he doesn't display himself, people can see his light. I'm going to let you take that, even though you know, I can, but I would love to hear, hear what you have to say about that. I think when, when someone comes into a situation without need and without judgment, people can receive what's flowing through that spirit. But I think when there's an energy of need or when there seems to be a sense of judgment or opinion, it blocks a lot of what the message could be. And so I think that um, as it refrains, uh, 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 offers to a, to a master is someone who has laid down, uh, their ego or as much of it as possible in order to just be in the moment and to deliver to the moment. 
And that could happen, like that can happen to to somebody that has no spiritual, you know, mm -hmm. life or anything. Mm -hmm. they, they can just, they, one day they can just become present to this situation mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. can see your light. And then all of a sudden people, like someone can be like, wow, you're so, you're so full of light. And yet that might not be how their life is because they constantly have to display themselves, prove themselves. But in this one instance, they were able to be seen. Mm -hmm. And, and for many of us, like for myself, possibly you, I know, I know you, you, you wrote the book I am and, and, and so much of the work that is that, that we do in that and we are on a you know quote unquote spiritual journey or whatever however you mm -hmm. want to kind of put it we're on this kind of quest to be us as much as we can um we we want to be able to get out of our own way mm -hmm. to such a degree that we can be seen but in being seen what we're doing is allowing those who are speaking to us to see themselves mm. And that's the mm -hmm. light. The light is not something that is mine. You know, here it says like, can see his light and his light is actually everybody's light. Mm -hmm. Very and well that said. is able yeah. to shine through me and you can see it because it exists within you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every single person is worthy. That, of right. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, so, like, like the sun's going to shine on the murderer just as much as it's going to shine on the that's newborn. Exactly right. You know, and, the and, and that's ready to receive it. Yes, that's, that's right. Exactly right. Because he has nothing to prove, people can trust his words. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Do you have mm -hmm. anything to add about that? <laughs> no, that's the no need piece. Yeah, yeah. Because he doesn't know who he is. People recognize themselves in him, just as I mentioned uh, earlier about the light, right? That. You yeah. don't want to define who you are. That way, other people can see themselves in you. Right, right. But, you know, it's the old um, Confucius quote, you know, not knowing is knowing. It, it's, it's being open to the infinite nature and, and being curious to explore that and expand that and not taking on any definitions that would block what you, what that light from coming through. And as we expressed earlier, if you want to be reborn, let yourself die. And that's all those definitions and all those things. And mm -hmm. that's a constant practice. That's not something that, Oh, I let myself die and then I'm done. And then that comes back to this because he doesn't know himself because he mm -hmm. dies to himself all the time people can recognize themselves in him. Right. So every interaction you have, you can allow that which approached this interaction to die so you can be present in this interaction. Perfect. Uh, I'm just come back. Come, on. If it's okay, Definitely. I just want to yeah. say a Absolutely. proper thank There's, you and goodbye. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Come back on and, and okay. we'll finish this and then we'll, yeah, we'll go through. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. So what we have so far is if you want to become whole, let yourself be partial. Um, oh, wow, that was quick. Are you back? If you want to become whole, let yourself be partial. If you want to become straight, let yourself be crooked. And you're back. You're, that was the quickest turnaround that I've ever experienced. You must have <laughs> quick thumbs, man. Because I was just like, everyone thinks about it. And I was just like, wow, this must be someone else. Nope, it's you. Okay, so we don't have to go through it all. Uh, because he has no goal in mind, everything he does succeeds is where we're at now. Mm, wow. That's so great. Boy, you could just sit with that one for a day. Um, you know, the uh, idea of everything he does succeeds. First off, we have to talk about the idea that like the Tao is a space of non-doing. And so the only things that he would do are things that he was being called to do through his mm -hmm, body, mind, and, and just the, the Tao. And so all of those things are now going to see because everything he does, he does with such an open heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that comes back to the service thing. And it, again, it becomes back to the non need thing. Um, interesting. Part of my work is with um, college and professional athletes that are looking to get to the next level. And a lot of what I teach them is that, look, you can have your goal, your desire, your want, 
it can be extreme in what you're looking to accomplish. Um, where the needle can't go is to need, because once it goes to need, you're putting pressure on life to deliver something to you that you feel you can't live without, or you're not going to make it without, et cetera. And not, now you're in, now you're living a lie because life is trying to teach all of us that we have everything we need. And so that's what helps them stay in that creative space and that calmness. So it's interesting. I think off of what you just said about that line. With no yeah. Goal. You know, it's interesting. I've, I've watched, you know, I, I watched some soccer and uh, football, depending on where you're from. And, um, and it's interesting watching great players um, age in that mm-hmm. game. And it's interesting watching not, not great players, but players who are great, right? Like in their mind. Because they realize that their ga- the way that they play their game has to change. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Right, you get a lot like, smarter be- because <laughs> yeah. because you you can no longer run in the same maybe of the same speed, maybe of the mm-hmm. same distance. You can no longer be physical. Um, you in in the same way that you were when you were young. You you know like and and as they age, it's interesting. Like great players, often, like. And, and, and players who are great, like they sometimes deal with it differently. Like you, you see really great young players because they have this cor- courageous sort of attitude about things and they try things that they mm-hmm. would never try before. And then when they become old, they no longer play that like number nine role really great or that, that role in the front, like in, as a striker mm-hmm. or as someone who's, you know, like, and they no longer, they, they're now hesitant. And it's like, okay, well, are you going to change your game or are you going to go to a worse team? Mm-hmm. Are you going to try and utilize your um, limitations as an advantage? You know, as an artist, I, I love limitations. I love looking at the idea that like, oh, if I am making a print... I cannot do the same thing as if I'm making a painting. And if I'm making a painting, I can't do the same thing as if I'm doing a drawing or a sculpture. Every medium has its own limitations. And if you don't work within the limitations, if you try to get rid of all of the limitations and just do whatever you want, it's going to be shit. Mm -hmm. But if you can find a way to be creative, to utilize and tap into your creativity, through the limitations of the medium, then you will be tapping into that deeper connection. Right. Right. No, it's, it's, it's great. I think when you're young and, and optimistic and you have your full body strength and ability to do incredible things, you don't have to think about it that way. You just, you just on full blast go. And then as your body starts to age, as this is speaking from an athlete standpoint, you have to get more efficient. And the way you get more efficient is by using the wisdom of what you learn through your awareness to keep that quote quickness, to keep that efficiency. Um, and so you get older, you get a little wiser about how you play the game in order to keep that greatness or that edge. And, you know, in, in this line that we're talking about, because he has no goal in mind, everything he does succeeds. Mm-hmm. And what this relates to for me is like, oh, my goal is to bend the situation to my will, right? Like, like if I'm aging and I don't want to accept the fact that I can't do this, I'm going to continue to try and make it work. Mm-hmm. If I, as a creative, don't recognize that I'm making a print, not a painting, and I keep trying to bend the right. printmaking exactly. process yep. to the painting process, yep. I'm, I am I am not going to succeed. But when I let go of that goal and say, oh, there's a limitation. Let me work with this limitation. Let me mm-hmm. see what this is and then work within it. You succeed. Right. And that's that, that's being in the flow. That's accepting the truth of change and working with it. Instead of water running up against a bank, it moves off of it in order to keep going. Otherwise, it would end up in a pond and just, um, you know, degrade. Right. So, right. Um, uh, because it wouldn't move because it was stubborn. It becomes, yeah, it becomes stagnant. It becomes stagnant, stagnant right. water, right? Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. And when so, the ancient masters mm -hmm. said, if you want to be given everything, give everything up, they weren't just using empty phrases. Mm. It's like, oh, this is it, right? Like, give everything up, give up your identity, give up your, your, uh, your need to be proven right, give up your, um, don't display yourself, give up that attention, give up being straight, being whole, being full, give it all up. That is the essence of true liberation. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. This one has been an interesting one as I've contemplated it through the years. Um, because at the core, we are creative beings. Um, that is a part of who we are as well, right? So there's, 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 there's the spirit in the flesh, the spirit in the flesh. So th there's, there's this constant dance we do with the urge to create and 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 demonstrate and to be um but i think knowledge of that can help in the balance of that can help in the flow between those two states um unless you know you you want to be i guess maybe just a a, a, a devout buddhist monk that that strips himself of all identity and 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 moves to live in that state of being their entire life. That's what they want to do. Other people want to have a balance between creating, having identity in the world, living, enjoying life, and yet also being able to go to that space where they can just be and, and let everything go. So it's a little bit of a dance. It is a dance. And I think, you know, like the Tao does talk about like removing desire. It's like being here present, enjoying what is, rather than always wanting more. And I think in our society, this, this, this concept of addiction and the concept of wanting more is really has taken over quite a bit. And I don't think being a yeah. Buddhist monk is the answer. I think that's, that's, that's escapist. And I, I, think I, being, I agree with that statement. It can be very much escapist, yes. You know, and I think like being here present in the world is where we are, but we don't have to over esteem the world. Right. We can be here present within it. Yeah. You know, if I could, I just want to add something to that. Cause again, this is something I've given a lot of thought and contemplation to. And as I look at the word desire throughout history, I really feel like that de desire is a, truly a natural human creative component. I just, I think when the threshold is crossed from desire to need is where suffering enters the picture because we can have joyful desires. Oh man, that would be fun to have that. Or I love that. Or that's so amazing. I'd love to do that. You know, there's this natural joy that comes from a desire, but it's when that desire moves to I want that and I have to have it and I need that. That is, it is part of the equation of my happiness now. Yes. And I think we have to, I think words sometimes through ancient text, I, I, I don't know if it's the same as it is today, but anyways, there's just that distinction and that discernment in those two differences, those very subtle differences between desire and need, because I think it's very natural and exciting and fun to have desire because I see that as intention. I see that as um, goal or want. I know goal from the, what we just read in the Tao it means something else. But I just think when you feel you need that or you cannot be complete, you cannot be happy, you cannot be good enough. That's when it, we we go into, um, um, uh, for lack of a better way of expressing it, a, a sense of ignorance that causes karma and suffering and time. Um, yeah, you know, and I always, I always like to, I always like to just chime in with this idea that like we can't ever let words get in the way of a good conversation, right? Like, and to be able to define your words and be able to understand how we take in those things is so mm -hmm. great because it's like mm -hmm. there's no reason for me to be like, well, no, desire is this because it's not for you and like whatever, like it doesn't matter. But I, I agree completely with what you're saying, and I really appreciate that. And then we end off this twenty-two with the 
Only in being lived by the Tao can you truly be yourself. And if you are connected with the Tao and you want something, that want is there for a reason. And that is truly who you are. That is truly who you are at any time. Now, we can also go back and say, well, are you allowing yourself to be empty? Are you allowing yourself to be partial? Are you allowing yourself to be all of these things? That, and this is where being lived by the Tao gets us to keep ourselves in check and, and keep those things that, that are desires from becoming needs. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. Right. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That keeps it on the other side of the coin versus the one that leads to, you know, so much of the destruction and problems because it's, it, you fall into ignorance with need. I think that's really the key turning point on the, on the fulcrum is because of the Tao, because of universal unconditional love, because of being birthed into existence and supported every moment to this one, how could we doubt that? How could we lose faith in the idea that we need something when all has been provided? And it's been provided by us in connection with that which is, which is the Tao. If mm-hmm. you want to become whole, let yourself be partial. Mm. So wow. beautiful. Thank you really so good. much. For, yeah. for, this is such a, this was such a good, good chapter. And it's the first time that I've covered 22 on Dow of the Day. So I really appreciate oh, that. Yeah. No, thank you for having me, Martin John. It was really nice to connect with you and chat with you. I love what you do every day. I love your spirit. So thank um, thanks for having I've, me. I've connected and... with you on Instagram and I'd love to, I'd love to connect off, off channels and we'll, and we'll be in touch. That'd be great. Love to hear a little bit more about your Chicago background. So we'll, we'll definitely do that. Sounds Take good. Take care. All right. Have a good one. Be well. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Well, that, is, that was a robust Dell of the day, everybody. I really appreciate you guys sticking around and, and listening and all the claps and hearts and thumbs ups and all the things that I got. I really appreciate every each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Love you guys uh, so dearly. This is a Recover Yourself production. I'm your host, Martin John, and uh, I work with clients one-on-one, and I am here to help you recover yourself. The work that I do includes my art practice as well as energy work, four sessions you'll be off and running and uh, everything that you do from this point forward will help you you know understand the Tao more because you are enlightened in every way i love you guys thank you so much once again this is a recover yourself production i'm your host martin john and until next time keep recovering yourself <laughs>